People, 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 oh my goodness, good morning, good morning, good morning, you know who it is, Arsenio Buck reporting live from Male Maldives. Guys, <laughs> I don't even, for, listen, okay, if you're a first time, if you're a first time listener, sit down, don't cut it off, this story could change your life. If you are returning from my story last night, this is really going to just turn everything within you. Honestly, I'm still shocked. I, you, you know, oh, okay, can, how can I break this down? Can I break down the timeline? Okay, guys, I'm just going to reiterate what, I'm gonna, uh, what happened yesterday. Guys, you can't buy currency on this island. Okay, um, it's it's not it's not um, I don't even know how to say it. I don't know what the big word is, but basically you cannot use this currency anywhere else in the world, nor will people even accept your currency and you can't even come here to get it. Let's just put it that way. Honestly, unless someone Western unions you a little bit of money, you're trapped. And yes, I did hear some things last night in terms of the story that I'm going to be getting into, whereas there probably is something that could help you. But honestly, if you go to the airport and you go to foreign currency exchange, they will not accept any of your money. They won't give you any money. I don't even know what they're there for. The ATM machines, they won't even give you money. Um, or maybe, well, I, I don't know why mine, my Bank of America, of course, my Bank of America card, I don't know why it wasn't accepted and whatnot. But... Everything literally, man, <laughs> guys, I'm just reiterating what happened yesterday. I couldn't get any money, okay? My Thai bot, they would not accept it. I tried taking out my American money. My bank in America blocked my card, okay? My bank in America, they blocked my card. Called them. They said, listen, I can only give you two, one more transaction. I said, guys, I need to buy a quick flight out of here. This is horrible. I, I don't have any money. She's like, listen, I'm going to help you. She went on. She put me on hold. She came back. She's like, I can give you two. I said, I'm going to pay for my hotel right now. I'm going to pay for my first morning flight out of here, and that's the end of it. And she said, okay. And I hurry up and purchased everything. Everything was good. Luckily, those ATM transfers, they almost charged me upwards to $600. But she said, okay, just looking at these pending transactions, all of them were denied. I said, oh, thank you so much. And so luckily I didn't lose six hundred dollars. So I'm I'm like okay. So I'm gonna hurry up and come back to my hotel and tell them the story. And so I came back to my hotel. He's like, so did you get currency? I said, listen, um, you, you know everything went down. I hurry up and call my you you know the flight. I hurry up and book a flight out of here first thing in the morning. And he was just amazed. He's like, why'd you do that? I was like, man, I got I don't have money. I don't have food. I can't. I don't have money to eat food. He said, dude, I'll take care of you. I said, man, thank you, but no, I, I've got to get out of here. So here I am sitting on the beach. Literally, I'm going to tell you the other side story. Uh, basically, I have some kind of boil or some kind of pimple that kind of just manifested itself into something bigger. And it was, it, was, it was so hard for me and difficult for me to walk. And I'm like, dude, I don't know if this could turn into cellulitis. Uh, I have a wonderful friend who um, – well, a student – uh, who's a epi you know, she's in epidemiology right now at the University of Sydney. I was getting ready to message her yesterday, and she messaged me for the first time after two months yesterday. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to send her a picture of this, tell her what I should do. But I'm in Maldives, and I don't have any goddamn money. So I'm like, oh, my God. So, of course, best friend Elisa, I'm like, worst case scenario, she could mess uh, send me some money to Western Union. But Maldives has holiday not on Saturday and Sunday, but Friday and Saturday. So I'm trapped without money until Sunday. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Just take a step back, Arsenio. Get back to the hotel. I'm telling this guy. And then I went back to my room, and I'm just sitting here. And, of course, you guys probably heard my podcast from last night. Uh, and my podcast from last night demonstrated the severity of the situation. So I went to sleep at 7, woke up at 8.30 to a door knock. You know, it was a door knock. Here, let me do the door. Let me. Oh, okay, that was a terrible door knock. Here we go. Hey, that's a better door knock, okay? The guy was speaking. And I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, I was supposed to meet him like an hour ago because it was 8.30. And he's like, oh, blah, 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 So I opened my door. He was going down the steps. He was like, don't worry. All food is taken care of. Come with me. And I said, oh, man, thank you, but, man, I'm just going to leave, man. I'm leaving tomorrow morning. I'm really tired. He was like, come with me. Come downstairs. 
And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna accept your, I'm gonna accept your invitation. Okay, I'm gonna go downstairs and whatever. Maybe he's gonna have food or something. <laughs> so I go downstairs, go outside, and here's this lady that I saw at the airport. She was the first one that was holding the sign, Express In at Hula Male. And she's like, oh my god, I'm the manager of this place. What happened? I'm like, oh, you're the manager. He's like, yeah. And she, and I told her the situation. She's like, okay, don't worry. I'm going to take care of you. And I'm like, listen, I already booked a flight, okay? Of course, it's only $126. A lot of you are like, shit, $126? Well, listen, the, uh, bear with me here. Which was really weird. Interesting, because the flight came out to 4600 which was like 155 Boy, that U.S. – okay, U.S. dollar surging again. Anyway, so she was like, okay, you just came here and you're going to leave tomorrow? Meaning today, I was like, I don't have any money. She's like, you should have just waited for me. And this was another thing that my close friend Allison in Australia was saying. I mean, honestly, what she told me was remarkable, to say the very least. But I was at haste and I did everything at impulse because I'm like, guys, all I have is like $300, 300 US dollars worth of Thai bot. Got a bunch of money in my Thai currency account that I can't use here. My American account is now blocked, so I don't have US dollars anymore. I'm fucking broke. Sorry for my French. And she's like, listen, you have excursions tomorrow. And I'm like, well, I don't have any food. She's like, okay, listen. You already paid everything in full. You could have waited for me, and I could have gave you money. And I'm like, huh? She's like, I could have gave you money. She's like, you need food? Okay, I'm, I'll pay your lunch and dinner. I'm like, um, I'm sorry? What? She's like, I will pay for your lunch and your dinner. And she gave me so many things. She took me inside. She's like, okay, what do you want to do? This provides you lunch. You're going to come back. Okay, we'll get some dinner. I'll take you into the city. We'll have some drinks. Everything on me. And my mouth dropped. And I'm like, at that time, I'm just thinking of so many different things. I'm thinking of trying to make excuses for me to leave today. And she was like, okay, um, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to order you dinner right now. She ordered me some Indian food. And the, I'm trying to put into words the gesture that she did. She, breakfast already paid for, obviously, because there's breakfast downstairs, right? And it's opening up probably in an hour. And she's like, okay, you're going to do this one. It starts at 9 a.m. You're going to go snorkeling. You're going to go check out this resort. You're going to do this. You're going to do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to come back. Come back into town. I'll take you into the city. Okay, we'll take a ferry. I'll go show you around. I'll do this. I'll do that. And then next, you know, the next day she was planning. The manager or the owner of this place was planning out everything for me. And then I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Um, wait, 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 wait. Just, just give me a second here. Give me a sec. I'm like, but – and then she saw me limping. She's like, what's wrong? And I showed her my wound. You know, it's not a wound, but it's just a freaking stupid boil that doesn't want to go away. And she's like, oh, my god. Um, okay, it looks like some it's, it's between your epidermis and da-da-da-da dermis. And I'm like, uh, what? She's like, I studied in med school for four years. She's like, let me dress that for you. I said, what the f- are you serious? She literally sent one of her guys, wonderful, wonderful Bangladeshis. I'm telling you, these are some of the most- Man, I love all my folks from Bangladesh. Wow, 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 wow. He went to go buy some supplies. She's like, I'll take you to the doctor if you want me to. I said, I don't got any money. She's like, I'll pay for you. I said, what? (laughs) What what do you mean? She's like, trust me. I'm going to take care of you. And I'm like, at that time, I'm like, I've never had not even my mother. My mother's taken care of me for 18 years, but I've never had a stranger do this in my life, and I'll probably never have a stranger do this in my life. Here she is. She takes me back inside the lobby. She gets all the supplies from her one of her uh, staff. She sits me down. She starts telling me her story. She's cutting everything in the most professional way because she freaking went to med school in Russia, now known as Kyrgyzstan. One of my closest friends, Nazira, who's probably listening to this right now, she is old she's probably um 
what is it? What am I trying to say? She lives in Kyrgyzstan. How was I able to book a hotel here where a lady helped me in the most unbelievable fashion? And she is now cleaning my wound. She's putting stuff on it. She's cutting everything in a precise manner. She's talking to me. She's like, oh, my dad was telling me this and that. The funniest story, you know, her dad saying, you know what? I told you to do this. You didn't do it. And this, it was just so funny. It was a wonderful story. She literally put some ointment on the wound. She put a little gauze, gauze on it, and then she wrapped it up perfectly. And I'm like, oh, my God. This is practically a doctor. She's like, you know what? I dropped out of med school because it wasn't for me. I didn't like it. And I'm like, hey, I got another friend out there. Carry you in. Love him to death. That's one of my friends back in Vegas. He was doing his master's degree and he dropped out because he said it wasn't for him. And we're here talking about this. She's like, okay, um, you're going to be in the water tomorrow. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm staying. She's like, you're going to be doing some snorkeling. It's a little bit of an open wound. But the thing is, I'm going to cover it up. By the time morning comes around, hopefully the wound is closed. And she was like, hey, do you want to go out? And I'm like, oh, man, it's 10 p.m. She's like, hey, can you wait for me? I'm going to go, go out, and I'm going to come back. I'm going to take you out for some drinks. And I'm like, man, but I'm so tired. She's like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow evening. Your thing is going to arrive tomorrow morning. She emailed me later on last night. And she's like, hey, I can't book you on this tour. I'm going to put you on this tour. And I was like, perfect. She's like, okay, 9 a.m., breakfast is here. Da -da -da -da. I've never in my life had someone do that for me. This was the most remarkable, this changed my, and you hear my voice because I can't express enough gratitude of what she did for me. This was unbelievable. Honest, <laughs> so I sat there, here I am, she brings me into the dining after she, you know, fixed up my wound and everything. She said, okay, uh, come in here. And have some uh, – and I go in there. There goes the tandoorian something chicken. There goes naan, which is like Indian bread. <clears throat> She's like, okay, here's some water. You want some mango juice? Here, I go get some mango juice. She's like, okay, you have dinner, and let me know if you need anything else. I've never had anyone who I met in one day take care of me like that before in my life. This changed the way I see human beings. She's like – mute the mic she said i mute the mic okay I, actually one of my users said i mute the mic but i don't think so huh that's weird okay because my mic is still on okay yeah so i think something is wrong okay but i'm gonna keep on going um and i'll just listen to it after that but i'm just i barely hear you okay can you hear me now i don't have anything on that's weird okay so one of my users is actually sending me uh she's listening to me right now she says she can't hear me so i'm gonna talk a little bit more into the mic uh yeah so maybe i was speaking too far or something like that so here i am guys okay so hopefully this is okay hopefully you guys are still uh there listening to me but anyways okay so anyways that changed this specific thing changed my life forever. I cannot believe what happened over the last 24 hours. I went from going to the airport, having no money, getting there, having my bank card blocked, going back to my hotel, hurry up, calling the bank. And you know what's so amazing about it? Could you imagine? Because I was just, I had to call Air Asia this morning to book a one-way ticket out of here. And while I was talking to her, like towards the end, my phone, my phone just completely died. Well, not died, but my Viber credit ran out. And now that my bank card is blocked, I can't make any more calls. So could you imagine if I was talking to Bank of America yesterday and I didn't have anything in terms of, you know, any credit? So I would have had to hurry up and somehow call my best friend and hurry up and get some – just mayhem. But this morning, I was actually talking to them. They were like, yeah, no problem. And right towards the end, my phone just completely went dead. Or, you know, the Viber credit just completely conked out, and that was the end of it, the end of, end of the conversation. Could you imagine if that happened yesterday? All of these things that transpired over the last 24 hours, I cannot – believe but it was just one person one person that could be you and that's ultimately going to be me and this is going to be the story that i will tell 
for the rest of my life, even when I'm doing presentations at TEDx or wherever, because this is what human beings should be doing. These are the types of gestures that we should do for one another. And at that time, when she was doing this, I ultimately said, you know what? Okay, I need to immediately do something for someone else also. And so I did. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. So yeah, one of my users is chatting with me right now. Uh, so yeah, yeah, she helped me out with, with my wound and everything. And wow, how does a manager say, you know what, I'm going to hook you up. You know what, I'm a med student. I'm going to hook you up. You know what, I did my med school out there in Russia, but then the revolt happened. Uh, now it's known as Kyrgyzstan. I'm like, Kyrgyzstan, that, that's where one of my close friends live. How is this? This is a small world. And she's like, yeah, I'm a med, you know, I was a med student. Now I do this and I do that and I'm staying here. She's one of the most interesting people I've ever met in my life. And she helped me. So now coming down into it, it's amazing. Oh, okay. You know what? Okay. Okay. So, oh, okay. So this is actually interesting. Um, and she actually wasn't even talking, but the person who's talking to me right now, she wasn't necessarily talking about the podcast. She was actually talking about another voice message that I sent her directly. Damn it. Okay. So we're all good, people. You guys can hear me. It's all good. It's all gravy. And I'm going to stay here until Monday and fly out and go back to Bangkok as a changed man. My life has changed forever. And it all came at the expense of one of the most, no, the most kind hearted, unbelievable gestures of humanity and you know what i ultimately wanted to hurry up and do something for someone and you know what i'm paying it forward i don't know how but all these things i've been doing and talking about and you know my positive mindset i feel that this particular woman came into my life because of everything i thought about in the past Leading up to now, all those times that I've been helping everyone in terms of these podcasts, my folks in Canada, my folks in Germany, my folks who are coming on board right now, all these things have happened for this day. All the times, all this information that I'm giving out right now, all the blogs and everything, it all happened because of what I thought about in the past. Now, of course, yesterday, the events were ugly. I was literally broken, but I was broke as hell. And I was like, I'm getting the first flight out of here. And I ultimately ended up, you know, bu buying the first flight. And then this woman who I met at the airport earlier in the day, she came back and she's like, hey, I'm going to take care of you. I'm a med student. I'll help you with your wound. I'll take you to the doctor. I'll do this. I'll do that. And it changed my life forever. See, all of us, moral of the story, all of us can do this for people. And it doesn't have to be best friends. It doesn't have to be anyone. It could be complete strangers. We can do this for people. But the thing is, because of cultural codes and, cult and you know, this and that, so many different things, we feel that we're obligated to not even uh, – well, we're obligated to not do this because of what culture and what our historical self has told us and has taught us. But you can. And going forward, <laughs> I'm, I swear, I want to do some. I'm, well, I guess I'm giving this information to you guys. I've been giving so much information to so much of my tribe out there who's listening to me all around the world. And this was the moment that has changed my life forever. I just want to give an absolute shout out to the universe, to Express in at Hulamale, where I'm sitting on right now, on the bed, underneath the air condition, beach right over here to the right, and a lady downstairs and people downstairs who absolutely care about me, and they just met me yesterday. I'm giving my absolute shout out to all of you. I'm giving my shout out to my tribe right now. I'm grateful for absolutely everything in my life right now. Guys, I went from literally being broke to going on a snorkeling trip, to having everything paid for, to having someone. It, it, in terms of my wound, I woke up this morning. I stretched it out and everything, and it's literally closing. It feels so good. I could lift my leg. I could go running. I can do everything. Can you imagine? She did that. The manager, form, former med student. 
she helped me. I was going to hurry up and go home today and hurry up and go to the hospital back in Bangkok because I felt like, you know, something was going terribly wrong. But you know what's so amazing? They probably would have said, oh, well, uh, we're going to give you some medication. You have to take these pills. And that's probably what they would have said. But she took the time out and dressed my wound for free. Thank you. This is unbelievable gratitude. This is, I'm so, I can't be grateful enough. <sighs> Deep breath in. Exhale. And I'm just going to try to recuperate. And I'm going to go throughout this day doing so much for everyone. And I'm going to take this with me for the rest of my life. This woman who was supposed to come into my life, she did. And she left the most lasting impression any human being can ever leave on a stranger. Thank you. And these reviews and these things that I want to be putting out and what's going to be li- what people who are going to be listening to me for the next four months, four years, 40 years. This is going to be on YouTube for the next 40 years. I hope this changes your life. If you're listening to me today or if you're listening to this particular podcast in the next 10 years or 100 years, let this to take this with you throughout your day, throughout your life and do for others more than what your historical self should tell you or the, your, what your historical self has always taught you. Do it for others. Help people because we're all human beings in the end. I just want to give an absolute shout out to my tribe out there who are listening to me right now. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, my friends, um, Allison, who kept me grounded. Uh, my, my friend, uh, Allison in um, Australia. My other friend in Bishkek, uh, Alisa. Uh, w- just everyone around the world. These are my best friends that I have to give a warm shout out. But the biggest shout out is to this particular woman, the manager here at This Expressing at Hulamale. She's the ultimate being that I want to become you are you're going to you're going to ultimately listen to this 23 minute podcast and you change my life forever you are who I want to become and I just can't say thank you enough but thank you and with that being said people stay tuned for more podcasts stay tuned for the blog that's going to be coming up on the Arsenio Buck Show dot com special shout out to my Germans it seems like you guys love me and I love you too <laughs> And with that being said, people, do something for someone today that is just going to wow them. And again, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. This is your host, Arsenio. Stay tuned for the next podcast. Over and out.